Hey everybody, it's Christy back with another video. And today I thought it would be fun to do a little paint tutorial with you. I don't normally do that here on my channel, but one of the things that I am striving for in 2024 is to show ways that I think art should be more accessible to everybody. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to show off some quick and easy Valentines. So I divided my paper here into four roughly even sections. I can tell they're not quite even, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I'm just going to cut them up and make them into Valentines. So let's go ahead and show off four things that I could do on this paper to make four quick and easy Valentines. So I'm going to start with a Valentine idea here on the top that is a wet on wet technique. So all I'm going to do is wet this whole paper down. And I actually did all of these ideas already. So I'm going to show you finished cards when I'm when I'm done here that kind of give you an idea about ways that you could do this that might look a little bit different. But that I think are equally cute or different color palettes. So let's start here with this wet all the way down. And all I'm going to do up here is drop color in. I'm going to do like a pink and an orange and that kind of shaded palette. So this is my Sennelier palette. I just like using it. I'm going to start with my Rose Matter up here and I'm just going to kind of tap in some rose paint just anywhere I want it. I don't really care. I'm not going to be too precious with the spotting of it. And then I'm going to take my cadmium yellow deep and I'm going to do the same thing. And again, you could use any colors you want. I'm going to show off four different kind of Valentine's-y color schemes here. So I'm adding a little bit of water to this to make it move a little nicer. Just kind of tapping in and I am deliberately touching the pink because I want to make some orange in here. And now you can do this a couple ways. I'm just going to go in and drop some water all over here to kind of spread this out more. You could use a spray bottle on top of this, but you just kind of want to let the paint dance. We're actually going to come back to this one later, but I want to get more pigment in here. And I am kind of going to go over it with my brush because I want some of these colors to play together more. I'm going to add spots with a little more pink. Maybe I will even take my paintbrush and just give some spraying, yeah. Because I really want it wet. I just want it to kind of blend together, have kind of a really pretty muted effect at the end of the day where the colors kind of run into each other. It's kind of the idea I'm going for here. And then if there's, and like down in that corner now, it feels like there's, too much so I'm just going to dry my brush off completely and this is a quill brush so it picks up a lot of water and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up some of that water. Do it another time. And it just picks up a little bit of that excess water. I could even grab another dry brush, completely dry, off of here and just, it almost acts like a sponge. But there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let that dry. I will come back to it in a little bit. I'm just going to take along this edge here. I can see that it's not quite all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to go like that. Okay. So while that one is drying, let's go ahead and let's work on the same side. I'm going to do another wet on wet idea over here just because that way it will be kind of done. 
I'm going to take my flat brush and you could do this with any brushes. You don't need specific brushes. I'm just playing with some different brushes because I like to do that from time to time. And I am going to use my cobalt violet hue, this guy right here. I'm going to use a red color, so I'll use bright red. And then I'm going to do, maybe I'm going to mix like a lighter pink, or maybe I'll just go in with a pink as well and do like a pink. No, you know what I'm going to do? All right, I'm going to do bright red. I'm going to do this purple, and I'm going to do dioxazine purple. I'm going to do one that's mostly purples here because I think that would be really really pretty maybe I'll use carmine to keep it cooler I like that all right so we'll start with this color right here I'm gonna wet this color and get cobalt violet hue and just make a stripe across the page it doesn't have to be perfect they're gonna meld together and then I'm gonna do one in carmine right next to it and I'm going to make sure they touch. I want them to bleed. And then I'm going to do one that's dioxazine purple. And again, I want them to bleed. I am okay with them bleeding together. That is the idea. And we're just going to repeat that process a bunch of times. There we go. all the way down the page. You could do lighter colors if you want. I'm kind of going for something pretty vibrant here. I might pull a little of that purple from that first stripe. It's pretty, uh, pretty intense. There we go. That seems a little bit more what I was going for. I'm gonna just blend that out a little bit nicer. And then we're going to go in with our cobalt violet. And I'm going to do one more, one more layer here. And one last layer of the dioxazine violet. Okay. So yeah, and you could do this with any colors. I did this with cooler colors for my example. Up here, I'm seeing some water lines, so I'm just going to go back in there with a little bit of red to try to smooth it out. A little bit of purple. Okay, cool. And we're going to let that dry. Now up... Let's see, uh, maybe we'll let those dry and then we'll come back for these sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry off camera and go in in a minute. All right, so I just went ahead and I flipped this around so that we can work on these other pages here. So I'm actually going to do kind of a neat heart pattern here on this design. So I'm gonna start with the rose matter again, just pulling out some pink here and I am going to Roughly in the center of this, not worrying about it too much, just go ahead and put in a heart. It's Valentine's Day, so let's go ahead and draw a heart. Doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fill it in like so. And actually, I'm going to grab a smaller brush to do the next steps here. Just go ahead and fill that out like that. So there we go, there's our heart. So now what we're going to do is we are gonna go around this heart in alternating colors. So let me grab, this is a King Art round two brush for the first couple of layers. And I actually made a blue, like a tealy color here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and I am going to outline the heart and I am going to take care not to touch it. I'm not going to care too much about it being perfect. The idea is just to kind of outline the heart, almost like in how the Grinch stole Christmas. 
how there's like an outline around the heart. All right, and then I'm gonna go around that with the pink color again. So we're gonna go back to the rose matter. I'm gonna get a little pile of it here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. For these first couple of layers, I'm trying to have kind of a thinner heart, like so. Okay. Now I'm going to start to thicken as I go around a little bit. So this next layer, I'm going to go a little thicker with my color. Not too much thicker because, again, you kind of want it to build outward. At least that's kind of my idea for this. These are just things that I kind of mocked up myself that I thought would be cute and fun. All right. Do the same thing again with the pink. Each time I'm going to get a little bit thicker. And you'll notice I'm not doing anything too perfect. It's just supposed to look cute. I'm going to move to a round four brush now to try to get an even thicker line on the outside here. So we're back to the blue. So we're going to go a little bit thicker. Like so. And a little bit thicker here with the rose. Okay, like that. And we're just going to keep repeating this. Mix a little bit more of that blue color. I just took my phthalo turquoise, which I thought was a little bit dark for this particular situation, and I mixed it with some phthalo blue. Now, as we get to the sides, don't worry about that because it's not going to matter. We're just going to kind of pretend that they're not there and keep going. I am going to start to do some broader strokes now around the outside. And it's not perfectly in the center, but who cares? It is a handmade Valentine. The point is for it to be loved by somebody. The point is for it to be fun for somebody. The point is not for it to be perfect. For these last few layers, I'm going to get an even bigger brush out. One more layer up in the corners here. And then down here, we'll kind of do some broader, bigger layers. And if it bothers you, 
that it's it's uneven you can always cut it down but it's really not going to bother me too much This point can almost just be rounded out like that. And one more pink layer. And there you go. That's pretty much all we're going to do for that one. We might put a sentiment on it later but that is where that one is going to stop. All right, on the final card, we are going to do a little ladybug thing. So I'm going to start this one with my bright red. And I am going to paint a single big heart kind of off to the side. And I want to try if I can, to make it pretty symmetrical, I may end up with a smaller brush here because I'm going to try to make it as symmetrical as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. So we'll fill this in just to see where we're at. And you can do this with any paints and any colors. You could just have the primaries and make it work. That's looking pretty good for what I want here. Make that one side just a tad bit rounder. that I am going to extend this oops out a little bit more like that there we go good that looks really good so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that dry and while that dries I'm going to go ahead and to that, I'm going to add some little hearts in just various places. Nothing crazy or special. Just a bunch of little hearts. They don't have to be perfect. Hearts are kind of hard to do with a paintbrush perfectly. So you just want to have some little hearts scattered all over the page. We're going to add some more later with a fine liner. So maybe one or two more. Okay, so that's good. We're going to add more of other stuff to that one as well. We are going to do a lot of work with a black pen. So basically, if you were to do this, I just have a block here of paper. I'm using paints of any kind, brushes of any kind that are watercolor brushes. And I am going to use one set of brush tip pens at the very end. So that's pretty much it. I am going to grab another sheet of paper to do something with that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's let everything dry 
and then we'll come back in with our markers and show what we're going to do with those. All right, so I went ahead and I took this off the block and I took the tape off. I should have kept the tape peel on there. I know how much everybody likes a satisfying tape peel. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these up into separate cards. Try to be careful here because I am going to extend this one just a little bit so that I get a little more on there. I kind of made the heart a little too close on that one. Cut this one like so. So we've got two. We've got this guy here. A little more so I can cut into it. And I'm just using a normal pair of scissors. I'm not doing anything crazy special. I may slice a little of this block off of the very edge of this one just because it had kind of like this gummy thing on it I didn't like, but that was just my particular block. Um, and then we've got this guy here. So I'm going to slice it nice. And so we have just the wet on wet beautiful thing that this became. So here we go. There's our four different things that we are going to work with now. So uh, let me start with the one that's got, I think, the least on it, which is this guy here. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can work a little bit closer on this one. And I'll see if I can pull off some of this gummy stuff so that it's not giving us the business on the side. There we go. That looks a lot cleaner. So I'm going to start by turning this into a love bug. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to just make this into a little ladybug. We're going to go like this. Um, and then we're going to go this direction so that it's got a little bug like thing happening here. And I'm even going to extend the bottom here so that it looks like it's kind of fanning out into a bug a little bit with the wings like that up here where the this part of it is I'm just going to round it out and then I'm gonna fill it in and put some little antenna on it And I'm using Legion Aqua Cold Press Paper, but you could have used hot press paper for this if you wanted to, especially for these ones that I'm going to do a little bit more drawing on if you don't like to draw on cold press paper. And then I'm just going to put some little antenna on this guy. Nothing crazy. Some cute little antenna like that. And then we are going to go ahead and draw in some little legs on this guy. So we're going to draw some legs up here that kind of go like this. And again, I'm not doing anything terribly fancy. I'm going to go back in and thicken those up a little bit later. And then we've got a set here that are going to go kind of like that kind of buggy like and then on the very back we are going to do a set actually we're going to do a set here and then a set a little ways up here i made those incredibly unbalanced but there there that's going to look a lot better it's not supposed to be perfect and then we are going to use a pencil for the next part so I just want to sketch it out so that I kind of have an idea what I want to do here, but I want this to kind of look like it would look when you trail off of the page and then we will continue the trail kind of up and around here like that. I just like to give myself a little bit of a roadmap before I start that process. I'm just using the thicker part of the brush pen to kind of give me those little lines and then we'll do the same thing over here. Okay. 
All right, and then I'm going to fill this out with tiny hearts that are black. Just little guys all over to kind of fill up some of the space. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. Just kind of giving me a little bit of balance like that. Okay. And then I'm going to take a thicker black nib and I'm going to make some dots on the back of my ladybug. Like so. Then I'm going to do some that are a little bit smaller. Like that. And then I'm just going to write on this card right here. Love bug. And my last step, and this is not something you even have to do really, but if you wanted to just give these a little bit more bug like tendency, you could make them a little bit more thick, like a little ovular shaped, but nothing too thick like that. They just look a little bit more like buggy kind of legs if you do that. I think it looks kind of neat, but don't feel like you have to if you just want to leave the legs more simple. Like that. And that's it for that card. I just like the little guy. Maybe I will make the heart that is on the love bug filled in with some red. Yeah. And I think that's all I'm going to do for that one. I just really like the idea of a love bug and I think that's super cute. And I will show you an example of how I would turn it into a full card in a minute. This one I am going to leave just as it is and just put it on a card base. So there's two done. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one next. So for this one, I am going to just draw some big hearts all over it, kind of. So I'm just going to go in here. And one thing about this step, because you may or may not choose afterwards to go in with more watercolor paint, because I'm going to show that. I'm using a waterproof pen. These Tombow Food No Skate pens are definitely waterproof. If you're not sure if you have a waterproof pen, do it in pencil first and then use your watercolor and then go over top of it. So I'm just going to put some big hearts on my page. They aren't perfect. They're just meant to be cute. And then I might go in with, like I did on the other one, some littler hearts just all over to kind of make this a fun, cute design. And I'm really going to let the watercolor kind of speak for itself on this one. Okay, maybe you want to do a few medium-sized hearts like that in different places. Maybe one right here, one up here. And over here. Yeah, so I like that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll get out some metallic paints and show what I would do to kind of judge this one up with these three hearts. I'm going to leave the other ones alone, but I'll show you that in a second here. So let me go ahead and get my metallic paints and I need to cut something to show what I'm going to do with this piece. All right, so for this card, I just cut a little strip of paper and I am going to glue it down the center here with some foam tape. You would not 
have to do this if you didn't have any of those things and you wanted to, there's a couple ways you could do this, but um, I just thought this would look really cute. You could just write this right on there. You could not cut the heart out or you could cut it out of the watercolor paper and have a white heart behind it. But what I'm gonna do is take this black pen here and I'm just gonna thickly go ahead and outline the other letters. And you'll notice that I am not somebody who does nice lettering. It isn't something that I think should be a requirement. If you have fancy, nice handwriting, you can write any sentiment you want on these. But for those of us in the I'm not good at lettering camp, I wanted to give you some ideas and ways that you could still make something that looks super cute. So I'm gonna first go ahead and just use my little exacto knife that I have here to score the middle of this just right through so that I can easily puncture it with my scissors and this is a smaller pair of scissors that's easy to get in and out of things and I'm going to do what I call or what we in the crafting world have always called fussy cutting and I'm just going to cut out this heart that I did Again, not looking for something perfect, just looking for something that is handmade and special to give somebody special in your life. And these are all ideas that you could do with your kids too. So if crafting is something you like to try to do with your family, I definitely think that all of these are ideas that kids could enjoy as well. I'm going to try to get in there and round the top of this out just a little bit freehand. Which is a dangerous game. There we go. It's better. All right. So there we go. There's my little heart. I actually think I'm going to go in with my black pen and maybe just do a little bit of an outline on this. Gonna get some on the table here, but that's okay. Just enough that it matches kind of what the rest of it's doing. Okay, maybe a little bit more. I got more than I wanted to on the table there. Sorry, I'm not doing it under the camera. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some foam tape, nothing fancy, dollar store foam tape, and I'm just going to cut some pieces of that off and stick them on the back of this. Is that too long? It's a little too long. Doesn't have to be big pieces, just enough to kind of make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'll get one more up here like that. And then all we're gonna do is pull the foam tape pieces down. And again, you could just write the word on the card if you wanted to. You don't have to cut out the heart if you don't want to. You could put a watercolor heart on there. You could do a little metallic watercolor on there. But then we're just going to try really hard to position this right in the middle of this card. Like so. I think that one is a little bit too far. There. And then you just have something that's got that neat little cutout in the middle. It's got a little dimension and you're going to put it on a card back or on a postcard. So there's one idea. Let's finish this one up and then we will show off our finished. I'll show you how to finish any one of these cards. So I thought this one would look pretty neat with a little bit of sparkle. So I am just going to add a little bit of one of these pinks, which are having a hard time 
there we go. They were having a hard time focusing there. But I think that I want something maybe a little like this guy here. It looks like it would be really pretty. Or maybe this one, actually. Let's do this one. It looks like it would look really pretty in these hearts. And really go with the color scheme that we've got going there with the peach. Just going to put a little bit of glitter in the three big hearts. Not going to do a lot of disrupting of the underneath color. Although it's Sennelier paint, so it shouldn't move too much. But yeah, look, that's pretty. Again, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I think if you've got the metallics and people are always looking for a way to kind of zhuzh up a project with metallics, this is a great opportunity to add them with a little flare to the cards. A little more on this one. A little more sparkle. And maybe a little more on the first one, too. There you go. So when you move it around now, you've got that beautiful pink and purple thing, or pink and pink and orange thing happening, which is super, super cool. All right, so now you can just go ahead and put these on card bases. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is how I would go about mounting this on a card base. You could certainly just put this on a watercolor card to start with. You could do it on a watercolor postcard. You could buy just regular old card stock and just do it with white card stock. I am, I was a card maker for years, so I have a lot of colored cardstock. So generally, I will just take my watercolor piece and I mat it on something that matches. Like I'm going to do the Love Bug one on this red, and then I do that on a card base. So to make a card base, I literally just take a piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock and I cut it in half lengthwise, like this, and then I fold it in the middle. I don't do anything terribly more fancy than that. And then I just usually go and build from the ground up to make sure that I have my nice layers the way that I want them to. I like to use these Tombow adhesive rollers. You could use a glue stick. You could use uh, regular liquid glue. If you're going to use liquid glue, just be careful how much you're using. Um, but I just like to use ad adhesive because it's easier and it's less messy. And yeah, I'm just gonna use the lines here to kind of make sure I've got everything pretty even. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a card you're giving to someone you love. It certainly shouldn't need to be perfect for them. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the watercolor paper. I do usually, after I make cards like this, Put them in a book or something for a day or two just to make sure the adhesive all stays nice and flat. So then, voila, we just do that and push it down. And then we have a card. It's a done card. So here is this one. And then here's the love one. If you're going to mail this one, maybe don't put it up with the, with the foam tape and just glue it down. Here is the heart one with the glitter paint. And here is this heart one. Now I'm gonna show you some of the other ones that I did that were um, like my prototypes for each one. So for this one, I did another one that looks like this. Uh, I think I'm gonna give this one to my nephew because I kind of did Spider-Man colors. 
They're America colors, but they're also Spider-Man colors. Uh, so there's these two on different card bases with different color palettes. Same idea. We had, so for the wet on wet card, I did something a little different here. For this one, I just did hearts because it was easy. If you wanted to take the time and line it up, I did the alphabet and then I underlined I, O, and U, but I made the U into a heart for I love you. Um, and that is matted on some pearl paper. Just again, I had it. So I just did that and I thought it looked really cute. So that's the example of that one. For this one, I'm showing this with a different kind of mat. Just this one says be mine and I used a less, um, a more, I don't know, cool color palette, just a different color palette because I don't think Valentine's all have to be purple and pink. Like this one too was uh, red and blue. So if you have somebody who likes non-traditional colors, that might be something to consider. I don't think it necessarily has to be that way. So this is another example of this card with the love, the one that I did with you guys, I did the cutout in. And then I pretty much did the same thing for the love bug card. This one, I just ended up doing a little swirl that looked like a heart that took me a little more time and was a little more complicated, but yeah. And then this one I put for my love bug because I'm probably going to give this to my daughter who I call my love bug. So there's two examples of this kind of a card, but that's it. I just thought that I would show off how you might go about doing cards like this. And hopefully this gave you some good ideas to get out there and paint something really, really simple for Valentine's Day. Which one was your favorite? Which one do you think that you would try? Or how would you change these cards to make them uh, your own? I would love to know all of that in the comments below. And that's going to be it for me today. I hope this inspires you to make some handmade valentines. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.